All right. Hi, listeners, and thank you and welcome with being with us today. Myself, Sonia Clark, and I have the lovely Danella Purcell. Welcome. Hi, Sonia. Hi, it's lovely to have you here. And the reason why I'm so excited, again, people, I know that I bring you lots of beautiful people and get excited, but seriously, Janella Purcell is seriously fantastic when it comes to really stepping into a new field and showing and leading the way with a lot of um, with a lot of things really as far as business but also with the personal health as far as physical and with the spirit so let me just tell you a little bit about Janelle so she's a naturopathic physician best-selling author and award-winning author a chef now with her chef she's been a TV chef uh, with lots of various different shows and a nutritionist for The Biggest Loser. But with being uh, a TV chef, Janella was the, f the first here in Australia anyway that actually brought to the general public what food is as being a natural medicine uh, through the various different forms of media. So TV, print, and radio as well. And she's uh, she's across all of the various different forms of healing. So naturopathy, kinesiology, traditional Chinese medicine. She's studied uh, nutrigenomics. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my teeth in there, Janella. Nutrigenomics and epigenetics, which is seriously really quite interesting. We're not yeah. going to do a deep dive on that here today because we could be here for quite some time. Yeah, but another time that could be fun. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, because I'd love to do a deep dive on that and to show people uh, and to, to explore that what is that and how that can really make a big difference, which I think is seriously fabulous. But then people, listeners, uh, uh, Janella has also brought out her fifth book, which is Your 40 Day Transformation, which we will ask her a little bit about. And she's got a plethora of information to share with us today. So Janella, do you want to just uh, give a little bit of your story and your background to the listeners today? It's like writing a memoir, isn't it? It's like, which part will I focus on? I mean, I'm 51 now, so there's been a lot that's happened. <laughs> um, okay, so I think, you know, I started off my life um, with gut pain. I have a theory that it was a, from a traumatic birth. I probably should have been a cesarean. You know, I'm all about not having cesareans unless you really need them, but I probably should have been a cesarean um, with the trauma. And there's a lot of, you know, work being done on, on this, you know, on the delivery of birth and the way you were birthed, um, both spiritually and emotionally and physically. So I had gut problems. I couldn't eat really many things. Um, I was very emotional. I am very emotional. And that got worse at puberty. So puberty hit and my weight ballooned. I was diagnosed with endometriosis really young. So I had pain from my first men arc from my first moon cycle I was in pain and I was bloating and I had candida so you know it just kind of went on but my diet was really healthy my family are, are, are healthy people um so no one really knew it was wrong so we went everywhere to every specialist and you know there's nothing wrong with me so then I, I, I was really into food and I was always on a diet I mean, I was dieting from preteens, so it was a bit crazy, you know, because, you know, the 80s and social conditioning, cultural norms, yeah. Twiggy was, you know, the social, what we're supposed to look like. And I'm like, I'm half Lebanese and I've got boobs and hips and I don't look like that. So I was, you know, like a lot of girls in my generation and many generations did that. Um, so I started, you know, I cooked. I was always the family cook and I was cooking. My mother's Lebanese so and she's one of eight children so her brothers and sisters and all their kids were always at our house and so I was cooking which I loved so I learned a lot about food and what I could and couldn't eat and and then you know I got my chef's papers from working for so long on the job and then I studied naturopathy and I mean that was brilliant and probably one of the happiest times of my life meeting my tribe as well so I was about 26 then but it didn't give me the answers that I wanted I was still you know, struggling with my health. So then I studied Chinese medicine and kinesiology and Ayurveda. And then after 22 years in practice, which was only recently, I got to the stage where I was like, it was almost like, what's the point? 
of doing this with food and helping people with um, exercise and nutrition and fresh air if there's a deeper seated emotional issue going on. And, you know, that's where I'm at now, I guess. And there's, you know, I put out that my last book, someone actually said, you know, it's part, me part memoir and, and I didn't really realise, I didn't mean, that wasn't intentional, but it is, you know, the first part of it is, life sometimes throws you a curveball and I was on the receiving end of mine it was first of September 2013 that this particular part of, of my life the last seven years began and it was with a miscarriage and that just threw me into a spin that has not just to deal with the fact that I was never going to have my own family which I just thought was a god-given right and so the grief of that and and the anger and you know all of that but then what else is under there? Because, you know, menopause, they say, like Christine Northrup says it so beautifully, whatever you've swept under the carpet up until menopause, it's going to come out. So it kind of, you know, the miscarriage, I was 44, 45. So it brought, it was, it pushed me into menopause and adrenal collapse. And, you know, can you imagine? I mean, I don't know that my family particularly wanted to be around me because I was like, what the, the? and before that, Everything was great. I knew my purpose in life. When I had an idea and I wanted to do it, I just implemented it. Everything just flowed. I mean, I was struggling emotionally with the world, but as far as my career and my purpose, that was never, ever a question. So leaving, you know, slowing down my practice in the last couple of years was like that. It wasn't even like, a, oh, should I do it or should I, should I not? I knew I had to deal with some, the next part of my life being a crone really you know I was out of maiden I was out of the I mean we don't learn about this so much in our cultures about the four different stages of a woman's life mm -hmm. and I you know as a, I didn't become a mother to a child but I was I birthed so many things and then the next la the next stage after that is Marga which is kind of where I am now which is between mothering and old crone and that's the old wise woman and you know in two three years out of menopause and this is probably the best time of my life because you just don't give a shit anymore like you just kind of like i'm sorry i'm not really skinny i'm sorry i have an opinion i'm sorry i'm smart i'm sorry that you know you know all the things that we try and hide as women especially that you know they say oh you're too smart and you're too capable or you're too this you're and you're never going to get a man you're too yeah, strong yeah. don't you love that you're never going to get a man like that it's like oh my god i don't know if you know better things that beautiful series in um with pamela adlin that's um made in la no. and she it's it's fantastic and one of her daughters was talking about a mother and she said you know what my mum says about men somebody else's problem I, just was, <laughs> I love that <laughs> funny <laughs> yeah really funny so it's kind of been reevaluating. you know I think a lot of women at my age do this and we go what the hell have I just done for the last you know yes. 40 years with yes. please with this pleasing disease as Oprah calls it and you know, pushing everything down. And so what I've come to about my long-term gut issues and reproductive issues with endometriosis is I just shoved everything down. I just put it, I mean, not everything, because people think I'm really feisty. And I'm like, if you knew what else was down there, then, you know, then we'd talk about feisty. But, you know, a lot of my pain was in my solar plexus. So, you know, under my breastbone for a long time. And that's, you know, your power, your will, your expression. And a lot of it, I, I hear pushed down a lot to be loved and I don't want to do that anymore and I know a lot of other women don't want to do that anymore and it's co coincided with the rise of the divine feminine and you know waking up of the witches and sacred femininity and finding out our about our stages of a woman's life and you know in different cultures they mark them they you know with ceremony and they're anticip highly anticipated and young women can't wait to get into that red tent with the older women and hear about what they're talking about in there at the new moon but when i used to talk about this with my clients you know 20 odd years ago they just look at me like you know what what <laughs> and I, I mean even getting them off you know normal tampons that are genetically modified and bleached and dipped in estrogens 
that was hard enough, let alone getting them to recognize the moon cycle that goes with it and putting the blood back into the plants. And, you know, I mean, in days gone by, the first menarch, the first bleed of a young maiden, they used to get that blood and make bread out of it. And the whole Oof. tribe, I mean, see, we go, ew. Yes. <laughs> so powerful and sacred and wow. magical but it, wow. that's just conditioning that we go yeah that's it's just because we've been taught that blood isn't a thing that we drink especially you know yeah. menstrual blood. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. for centuries that that happened so yeah it's a really good i mean it's a really nice time and i think i really hope that more and more young women start to and look forward to menopause instead of oh it's all freaking over because you know we have living cultures where youth and beauty is praised and as we get older a lot of women my age go you know men don't even look at me anymore i don't even you know i feel invisible and you hear that a lot right by yes. menopausal women but i actually don't even notice that and i i wonder about that and i think because i didn't really ever trade my currency wasn't beauty i never felt like that it was more about connecting with people and I think men, as they get older, I've noticed they want to connect more. It's a, it's a different relationship too. So, I mean, it's all about how you feel about yourself, right? But I really want to help women and empower women to get to a better place than feeling invisible and frumpy and sweaty and no sex drive because that's what we expect menopause to be. But yeah. I've actually found it really liberating, really liberating. Once you're through the shit, I mean, you know, there's about six to 12 months of shit. But then <laughs> after that, then it's like, this is unreal. I've got another 50, 40 or 50 years of serious work to do here without chronic pain as well. Yes. 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 Well, definitely. And, I, and, and when you do look at lots of women in their different age groups and no matter what they're doing and whether they're in job roles or whether they're in businesses as well as... And you can see the, the different mindsets mm -hmm. uh, and what they're a, being a leader of. And as I said, when you, you took over the 50, you sort of go, yeah, I'm over all that. And I'm just going to say it as, if, as I want. <laughs> and people go, oh, you can't say that or you can't do that. I'm like, why? 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I really get it. I really, really get it. It's fascinating. And the beautiful thing is men aren't allowed to, or anyone, any victim of patriarchy isn't allowed to attack you as much as they did 10, 20 years ago. Like, oh, what a ball breaker or something like that. Like you just yeah. can't say shit yeah. like that anymore, you know, in a yeah. workplace without being seriously reprimanded. So, or, oh, what is she, you know, all of the stuff that you, all the names and you're too emotional or you do this or you do that, but they are watching their P's and Q's now, which is really great. And they're yeah. no, noticing that women are becoming, I mean, you know, in Japan, the word for menopause is second spring for God's sake. And here it's like death in the Western world, but it's so respected a wise woman who's been through it and all, and you get to that stage, it's second spring. It's, wow. you know. It's really yeah, we don't, we so, don't look at it that way at all. We no, but no, not there's at a few all. people on a mission to help get us there, though. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, because, amazing women. Because with, you know, there's so many different things that we're all involved with, really. So there's the our personal lives and everything that's involved in our personal lives and with our different loved ones and the connections and the relationships and there's complications in there. And then there's our working lives and what's involved with that and how we can rule in there and not rule in there and to be a leader and then the types of collaborations that go on and where you're mm -hmm. hold for and those sorts of things. Uh, and it is, I'm finding that this particular time now in 2020, there's a lot of fluidity and flexibility now with a lot of the, the, the different sorts of uh, barriers that have been around, which is, Fantastic, mm. absolutely fantastic. But on the same token, we need to really dig deep down per, in a very personal way to get that inner strength up so we then know how to then put it out in that professional way wherever we need to. And this is why I've got this as a show, as a podcast show, because it's about your personal and all the facets in your personal life as well as your professional life and all the facets in there. And the two are melding together, particularly 2020 and this whole COVID thing has been a big catalyst to really bring about that change, which was coming 
and slowly it's just brought it happen ha made it happen a whole lot quicker and we need to get into to to really hang on tight with that and be smart with it and look at uh, different sorts of viewpoints without being manipulated by the mass organisations that have the mass money as the, i.e., you know, pharmaceuticals, <laughs> dare I say it, um, and those sorts. We're waking up to that, though, now. Well, and it's been around, though. People have been talking about it for a very long time, quite a few decades. However, right now is where the people are starting to go, hold on, enough is enough. And we want to have options and we want to have choices, says she, who was just saying to you earlier before we started this show that we are looking at, at our state here in Australia being shut down for a 12-month period. Oh, what the? <laughs> Sorry, we're in 2020, right? <laughs> I'm still reeling from that. I didn't oh, know. That's, yeah, oh, my lordy. Uh, but, wow. So if we really want to have the life that we want to live, and be a lot more collaborative as communities and the communities are global and to really have it is now yeah yeah and to have the planet that we want to have and can change and and fix and therefore also have the the types of projects whether they're philanthropic or not we need to know how to evolve ourselves better as an individual as well as how we play with each other so then what we actually do do with our, our purpose, with our business. So say, for example, your business. So you've got all of these ideologies, all these beautiful um, belief systems, and you've, uh, you've really strengthened that with, the, um, uh, with theoretical training. And then you've put it, you've used as one of your, your, your currencies, as you said earlier, as being food primarily you also do other things yeah that definitely started me that yeah. was the beginning yeah so your foods and, and still seriously listeners you must 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 before i forget i really wanted to tell the listeners they must go and follow you on your um ig being uh on janella purcell you will you you will salivate constantly. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, Sonia. I just You're... post what I make. Oh, oh, my gosh. I just wish I could be there with you and I'd be eating it. I'd be your taste tester, okay? I'll be the taste tester. I wish tester. I could feed the world. I really, really do wish I could. Oh, my gosh. I wrote that the other day on a post. I said, I wish I could do a Jesus number and do a bread and fishes and just... <laughs> you know, bread and fishes and loaves and just get it out to the world. Do some of the pictures you've taken where you've you've obviously had a grouping of, of something going on there and you've done all these massive, and then I think I read at one point you were prepping and I'm going, because you've got all these massive amounts of it. I'm going, what is she doing? But I'm Lebanese. What do you do? I mean, you cook big. That's what you do. And I feed everybody around you. I, we, I trade a lot though too. I oh, funny so, I could get some of that sent my way. But oh, like the, oh. just to look at it, you can see there's the nutritional value there but it's also beautifully presented and you can see that would taste absolutely awesome it so does got, oh, I'm, so <laughs> yeah. I'm a taurian we love our food oh my god you're really gonna love it then oh yes, yeah, oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> and so you can see that these options that we've got can be for the better in so many ways it's just putting a bit of an effort in in a different way. But, and I know that when I've started down this track myself quite a long time ago, um, yeah, 19 years ago, my, my father, mm. both my parents have passed on and um, my father had multiple brain tumours. Oh, and, God, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that was traumatic. Um, ended up turning oh. out my mum did too, as well as other things. I'm like, okay. Whoa. It's not genetic, but hold on. But anyway. Wow. Well, genetics, only, it's only 1% to 5% of what you're going to get. I mean, that's what epigenetics is about. You don't get I what I was you're reading that. Get. That's why I thought, oh, I need to explore this one, the epigenetics. I haven't, I haven't explored that I've one. I've written a bit in really quite simply in my book, in the latest okay. one. And yeah. Okay. Go, just go under, you are, what do I call it? Uh, your genes are not your destiny or you're not your genes or something like that. It's quite in the first section. 
Good, good. Powerful, powerful. Bruce Lipton is the granddaddy of that. That's Bruce yeah, Lipton's stuff. My, my, my husband actually follows Bruce Lipton a lot. And He's uh, I'm going to start getting into it more too. But the thing is, yes, we have the power. And we, I know that back then I even felt when I started getting into all of that and being very uh, non-carcinogenic things, I felt like, oh, my gosh, but everything's carcinogenic around us. We live in a society like, you know, we just so, don't have the power. Well, now I'm feeling that well, we have a whole lot more power than what we realise. And there might be some of those people listening right now that think, well, I could make a difference. I'm really going to clan, you know, join together with some other people and make this happen. And this is why I'm still positive and still pushing forward to connect with people like yourself to say, come on, you're the great leader. You're a great voice there. Off you go. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's time, it's past time, you know, and I get a lot of my gut pain I know comes from frustration from my liver channel because I, I just get, we choose the sort of world that we want with our wallet and we can do that three times a day. And I think it's actually just about lack of education more than anything else, which is why I do have devoted my life to this path of service to educating people because I was just so interested in it. And it was because I was sick every time I ate and I thought it was wheat and I thought it was meat and I thought it was dairy. It's not wheat, meat or dairy. It's the industrialization of food. That is the problem. Yep. Yep. I can't even eat out. I live in the Byron hinterlands, which is like the greenest, most herbal area in Australia. There's, I can't eat out here. I, yep. without having to visit the toilet before I leave the restaurant yep. because of the trans fats or the palm oil or the MSG or the, you know, high fructose corn syrup or the GMO ingredients. It's, there's just so many different things that can go into food. Yep. And, you know, and it frustrates me. There's the word again. It's been like in all my healing sessions lately. Oh, you're frustrated. I'm like, no, you reckon? <laughs> because I see these, you know, amazing cooking shows. And I love cooking shows, like, really. Oh, Sonia, did yep, we just, you. my batteries go to run out? Oh, Hold on. Okay, okay. I don't know why my phone is doing that these days. Let me just see if this is, I'm sorry, everybody. Right. We it will was full. And we will, I think we will drop it all the time. Back. Hold on, let me just see. Can, it, can you um, can you see me okay here? Yeah, I can. Ah, great. All right, I'm sitting on my bed. <laughs> um, you know, I watch these beautiful oh, cooks making these amazing things and they're talking about the health benefits of it and then they put, like, you know, sweet soy, like ketchup manis in it, which is... You know, it's full of high fructose corn syrup and it's got palm oil in it or trans fats. And I'm like, that's actually, you know, 250,000 people a year die in the UK from heart disease from trans fats. And the, the Food Industry Association in um, America said, was it the GFAG, the food, food, food Regulator, gave the food industry to 2019 to get rid of them. And then 2019 came and the food industry went, no, we don't want to do that. Actually, it's too expensive. And so the government, the um, you know, government went, okay, sorry, you don't have to do that. And there's now no date. We haven't even had the discussion here. And I'm just like, if this is killing a lot of people and then we keep people alive with from heart disease. So heart disease isn't the number one killer anymore because people are being kept alive with pharmaceuticals. And that's costing the government and costing us. And I just we wouldn't even have this issue if these cheap foods that are destroying the planet and we're knocking rainforests down and, you know, orangutans aren't far away from being extinct and getting rid of all this habitat and all the lung, you know, the rainforests that are our lungs on the earth to create bad food, to make us sick and give us, you know, mental, the mental health issues coming from gut problems and Alzheimer's and one in two people are dying of cancer. And I'm just like, and people are still on TV using these products and they're not illegal. And they're not, and they're praised for using them. Mm. I just get, and this knowledge is out there. I mean, we should, we shouldn't, we know that it is there, especially now that we've got social media 
I mean, I think, you know, what happened to me when I was doing TV, it was, you know, she's getting a bit powerful teaching people this. So let's yeah. get rid of her. So they tried to buy me. Yeah. And it was like, well, that's not why I'm doing TV. It's to educate people. And people, I still, I still get so many beautiful comments and emails and texts and, you know, message and all the different ways you can <laughs> contact someone and through social media. But, you know, thank you. I was breastfeeding my children when you were doing that and they're now in their teenagers and if teenage years and I'm thank so thankful to you. So it was, I was doing it. And when I was in America recently, some people there were saying, you know, we've never had anyone in America do what you did because the food industry is too powerful. There's no way they're going to have let someone do that. Mm. And it's, it's a real, I don't know how I slipped between the cracks at all, but I'm really glad I did because it was almost 10 years, you know? And so I did get wait, I did, well, I was able to wake some people up to, you have choice here. You can still make these yummy foods. Because people used to think health food was yucky, you know, that it's alpha yes, from yes, celery. Yes. And it's that doesn't not. need to be. Well, it isn't. It's no. just changing, switching from shit oil to a really nice raw oil or from high fructose corn syrup, which is from genetically modified corn, to coconut palm sugar or, yeah. you know, something ethical, sustainable, whole and really great for you as yeah. well. And you know what? It's really, it's all returning back to the way we used to be a long time ago. So it's only that a lot of society has sort of gone off the rails. You know, okay, it's been quite a few decades, but it's, it's, it's not like it's a major shift back. Um, we can do it. And definitely it's all through education. I'm so pro-education for so many things. And it's about all of us then standing up and banding together to have more strength to, to make it come about. And there are people out there that are doing fabulous work and creating really fabulous products that keep at it, people. Please keep at it. We need this and we need to bring it in to, so that people understand that if they want to have to be fab fabulous in their own business, they need to be fabulous in their own health and things like that it's all a it's all a circle and it goes on if we decide to have children or can have children and those sorts of things so then i'm also thinking about your with fest the last time we spoke you had uh, said that this was going to come about and then we had some uh, some major uh, setbacks here in australia we had the fires and then we mm. had, and then we've had the covid and then I was, because uh, I was uh, talking to quite a few family friends and some lovely ladies that uh, reunited with a uh, family, reunited with over Christmas. And I was telling them about you. And they said, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, we've got to go. And I said, and remember how I said to you that I would be driving a bus. <laughs> Janella, tell me when. Save me a glamping. A It'll be me and I'm going to have a whole heap of people in that bus. <laughs> and now I can't. I'm in lockdown. <laughs> I'm so upset that you're doing yeah, this without yeah. me. Well, I'm not because, I mean, I am, but I've changed it. Because okay. I can't it, do a three-day festival with three days. No, I, and I, I thought that. I thought, oh, well, you're promoting it, but it's different. So tell us. Well, I was kind what of going, about? what am I going to do? Because I didn't want to... Um, Oh, what's happened here? I didn't want to just not do it, you know, and but I couldn't do it the way I wanted to do it. So I thought, well, why don't I just do a small retreat, actually? And, yeah. you know, because I wasn't doing so much practice and my book had come out and I was going, okay, well, what will I do? So I did that. So I found a retreat centre um, not far from here. It's about 10 minutes, actually. It's an organic retreat place and it's just divine. And I can fit 20 people. And so I'm doing the same thing, but uh, instead of you know, the big one, I, I actually spent the last few months making it my business to find the right presenters because I didn't want to do it all myself. And I'm so used to doing everything myself, but I, I don't want to. I mean, I keep having in my head the goddesses are gathering, the goddesses are gathering. And, and this festival or retreat is about connecting women and what you were just saying about, you know, doing it alone. And, and women, we're so used to doing it alone and we're so busy you know, a lot of people have children and they've got a career and I mean, we have got it all, but you know, it's too much. It's too much. And women are so sick. And a lot of what I I've, I've noticed in clinic, just to go back to that is there's only so much I could do to help women get better if they weren't, you know, making changes at home or in their lives. There's not much, you know, you can give them herbs and change their diet and then they get better to a point. But I also noticed the that they were so happy and felt connected when they were in session with me. And I felt that too, because they felt understood 
and they felt um, not like a, they didn't feel that it was not okay to be vulnerable and that they could say these things that they haven't said to anyone else before and they didn't feel judged. And I love that space. I mean, I really, really love that space and I want every woman on the planet to have that. And we used to have that. We used to be like that. The women would bring the children up together. The women would, you know, look after the hearth of the father. The women started ag agriculture and, and astronomy realised what was going on in the stars. And, mm. you know, we in matriarchal societies, I mean, and they were peaceful societies. And then, you know, patriarchy came along and that changed things and we became wives and we were, some people say, you know, conquered and divide and conquer. So we were separated to disempower us. And, you know, a lot of us don't feel strong enough to have a voice or we've got the voice, but we don't know what to say. But when we're backed up by other women, we feel much stronger. You know, we're pack animals. And, and I write about this in my book about oxytocin. And I, I just am so in love with oxytocin the last few years. It's a hormone that is produced from bonding. So it's either breastfeeding or you know talking with your friend over a coffee or you know running into a friend on a walk and having a really big talk or um childbirth when you give a have a vaginal birth and you stretch the cervix that releases oxytocin it makes you connect it makes you feel safe and it also stimulates estrogen so it keeps us all together it doesn't do the same thing in men that they've, they've found and that's a good thing because when we're under stress so when cortisol goes up and then we connect with another woman cortisol goes down so oxytocin brings the cortisol down the stress hormone i mean that's just awesome right mm -hmm. and you can see that you know when you're stressed you ring your mum, you ring your friend you ring someone and then you feel better just when you have a chat and you know no herb's going to do that long term mm -hmm. so i really wanted to you know, you see that in crises when things happen, the women really gather together. So it's called tend and befriend. And that's tending to the children together, all the children, not just yours. Because, you know, a lot of Indigenous cultures, every, mums were aunties. You don't even know who's your mum because all the women are aunties. So that takes the pressure off the one woman to be mothering perfectly and to look perfect on her own and go to work and not have vomit on her shoulder, which is, you know, when I mind my nieces and nephews, I'm like, how the hell do women do this? And my hair's a mess and I've got <laughs> shit all over my face and my clothes aren't clean. And like, I just have so much, I'm in awe of women who do this, but then they crash, right? Then I see them with adrenal fatigue. So I really wanted, I really have had this calling in the last few years to empower women. And I know it's a little bit cliche and a lot of people are doing it, but I just felt really strongly about educating women on the past, on what, in, on her story. So instead of his story, which is the male's version of, we've just been edited out of history mm. completely. Mm. And Jane Hybert Collings is a, um, oh, she's an amazing woman. I don't know if you know of Jane. She's in Victoria. She's, she's got the shamanic school of um, woman, no, the, the shamanic school of, uh, womancraft, yeah. They wouldn't let her call it midwifery because the midwifery association freaked out. She's a modern day witch. She's a grandma. She's doing a lot of stuff with moon cycles, and she's written a book called Ten Moons. And she's really she's a she's a great female um, role model. And I started, you know, working with some of her stuff and going. And she's written a book, a little ebook on her website called Her Story. So it's her story. And I read that a few years ago and went. Oh my God. And anyone that reads it will do the same thing because she just sort of gives you the sound by the last 3,000 years of what happened yes. since matriarchy was, societies yeah. were smashed. Yeah, so with, with Fist, which the name just came to me in the bath and it was, you know, women in the hinterland and it, I want to educate women on how we used to be and that it's okay to be powerful and strong and have a voice and so I've got all different people speaking at it so we're doing a, a drumming session one night and we're doing some sound healing and a, a vision quest one day uh, one one woman's talking about her story with slides from um there's a uh an archaeologist who's passed now called Maria Gimbutas, who she did archaeological digs from the 50s and she found all these female goddess relics that have been hidden. Mm -hmm. Actually, the pagan um, sites have been built over the top with 
churches, but they didn't bother to get rid of the carvings that are, you know, 30, 50,000 years old of the goddess. And so she's dug these and all her, her work got dismissed because she's a female, but her um, protege has taken over and, and published a lot of books. So I've done, the last few years, I've spent a lot of work doing some matriarchal studies and it's just so interesting. And I'm furious as a lot of people are too, because I've pushed all of this down to to fit into a patriarchal society and it's made me really sick and it's made a lot of women really sick and the men have been suffering as much as us as I mean not as much almost as much but they're waking up to now and you know Jane's doing Jane Hardwick Collins is doing a lot now with you know the witches are waking the witches are rising you know you know that what in her what I read in her story was back in matriarchal cultures there was not not even even in the early days of patriarchy if you broke your leg you went to a nurse if you having a baby you went to a midwife and if you needed some herbs you went to a witch so the herbalists were witches that's yeah. just it that's and the name has now been you know it's got a dirty slur on it instead of a witch was a really respected part of the community who brewed up some herbs and i mean i would have been hung no doubt or drowned back yeah. then yeah. and a lot of us were and it's just like okay the witches are waking so it's like the slut word you know when the, with the slut walk how we reclaimed that word it's the same what's happening now with mm. witches and it's you know there's people that'll catch on to it early like everything and then people that'll catch up and then there'll be people later on that will finally accept it and you're going to be criticized and abused if ever you you know step out and do something i did it with food it happened with food but now i just think it i feel like it is just so important it's the same with the work megan markle's doing too and there's a lot of women that are doing this and they're trying to make feminism not a dirty word i mean if you're not a feminist you're a sexist because feminism just means equality right it just means equal rights and i'm just a little bit over it thinking that that it's, that it's okay not to be you know i mean even in telly and shows that on tv my idea i got paid less than my co-host yeah. to the yes. man what's that you about? know i mean you see that in actresses and across all media and you're like why i'm more educated than you I, this is my idea and this is you know i brought it here it's just but you just have to take it otherwise you're a ball busting you know lesbian or something as if that's a bad thing yeah so the with fest is i'm doing 20 people and it's going to be amazing and it's on an organic farm as i said and the cabins are divine and i've got anthea um, amore from passion foods here which is she's australia's premier vegan chef and it's just amazing so much love she's sicilian and a good friend it's just going to be beautiful i've got persian rugs on the floor in the in the yoga room so we can have all our sessions in there and it's intimate and it's just going to be really, really lovely. Oh, lovely. I, love I wish you could come, Sonia. I know. When you're in prison. <laughs> yes, I'm in prison. <laughs> and maybe for another 12 months. <laughs> no, they can't. That's just, that can't happen. No way. I mean, the mental health of the of Victorians is at stake and the, of Australia. Like, yeah anyway yes. we won't get into no. that okay. let's not get into that yeah no 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 so um but i was going to say i really love uh the clip on your on the website you have for um there's a clip for where you're holding the uh the festival Why, Belina? oh my god yeah. i went out yesterday actually it's just to just check out where the drumming circle was going to be and i went back and went this is even more gorgeous it is it does look absolutely beautiful and so I'm interested to see when you update that. Um, I'd let, uh, you know, I'm just curious anyway, because I'm a curious person. When you, you have update... to live vicariously through us at the moment. Sorry? You have to live vicariously through us. Yes, I do. <laughs> One way or another. Please enjoy it for me. No, I will. <laughs> but to see what's in actually in all the sessions and who all the people are. Mm. So you've mentioned... Uh, oh, you looked that... at that? I posted yeah. that last, uh, I think it was 11th. It was an auspicious day for me astrologically. Um, yeah, I posted that with everyone with their pictures and what they're about. And, oh, I yeah, didn't hear that. Oh, no. go to the website. Okay. Um, on my website and then there's buyer and retreat on the tab. Yeah. And then it's got the first little blurb about why I'm doing it. And then it's got with best presenters. And I also yeah. posted it on Instagram this morning again and last week, just that link. Okay, I yeah. must have missed that. So for people that are listening, 
That's JanellaPurcell.com. So you don't have a dot .au? No. I, I, you know, I had that since, what, 2001, I think. And I don't know why. It was the, web, the guy who <laughs> set up my website. Okay. No. No, I'll no. Spill I'll spill it for, though, every, all of the links are always at the bottom of these, um, the web page here where this... Uh, this audio will be kept, but I'll just spell it for people that are listening anyway. So Janella Purcell being J-A-N-E-L-L-A-P-U-R-C-E-L-L.com. And you'll be able to find the details there, which is really, really good. So, uh, and that's happening now in October. So you push the date out a little bit. What was the date in October? October 8th to 11th. It was, the big one was going to be October 30th. Oh, okay. Um, so it's like t- October, but because now the borders are all closed, yes. I mean, there's still spots left and there wasn't going to be, it was going to sell out like the first day, but no one can come. So people had to cancel. And yeah. so there's still a, f- a handful of spots left and it's going to be people from, you know, New South Wales, <laughs> I get, you know, because we were all Northern News. Yeah. Yeah. We all my, their retreat center was almost in the bubble. You know, we've got this bubble f- between borders, so you can yes. move back and forth just yes. around it. So they were in it for yes. twelve hours, uh, and then our mayor said, "No, it's too confusing. Like it's not too confusing already." But anyway, yeah, yeah. it's going to be great. And um, then I hope for next year to do the big one. Going to do the then, big, yeah, big our one. Our national might be the year after. Nice, because you have year. quite a few celebrities lined up for that too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that people love coming here. Celebrities don't mind. Like, it's, we have Blues Fest and, you know, a lot of festivals in this area. Okay. So it's kind of an excuse. And we have a lot of celebrities living here now too. So a lot of people want to come anyway. And especially if it's something like this to promote the well-being of our societies. This isn't a feminist. This isn't about women and making women better than men. This is about educating everybody on you know, what we're good at and what we want to do and, and you know, liberating women and equal rights, really. Yes. yes. I'm the happiest girl in the world when I'm in the kitchen in the garden with a kid <laughs> on my head, whoever's kid it is. Like, well, I don't feel the well, well, When you do the big one, I'll just push you, I'll be there and I'll push you into the kitchen <laughs> and I'll do some other things and then I'll just come and taste test and I'll let then let everyone know it's ready now, it's ready. <laughs> well, that's good because I'm going to need someone to do that. <laughs> I just want to cook. I just love it, you know, and I'm actually, I haven't actually mentioned this to anyone yet, but I mean, I'm just about to secure a property to open an organic restaurant and cafe and meditation and retreat center and accommodation. So people can come and stay and eat and heal and, you know, and not like a, it's not going to be like a, a retreat center where you fast or have kale juice. This is going to be food, but all organic and local and nurturing. So, you know, there's a lot of people who are run down and tired and, mm. you know, all the rest of it and just want to escape society and they can come to a hinterland property on the creek and it's got a huge creek you can canoe down. And I want it to be like a beautiful rainforest restaurant and you can stay there and have some nice yes. food and get some great and refreshment. I leave. <laughs> I'm not going to. I yeah. reckon I'll be there for at least 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds absolutely awesome. And I was going to be asking you what's in the remainder of 2020. Yeah. You've gone now into 2021, but is there anything else left on the agenda for you in 2020? Oh, well, I'm just trying. I mean, COVID's holding me back a bit on this on the property and, and to move forward with with things. So I'm every other day I surrender and let go. And then I go, come on, in the in the days in between. <laughs> like, I I'm am so the same way. It is divine timing. I am accepting. And then I'm like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping, I mean, I just want to get onto the land so I can start clearing some of the camphor laurels and the weeds and, and do that. But until then, this is what I'm doing, Sonia. Monday night, I'm doing uh, yoga. Tuesday night, I do belly dancing. Wednesday night, I do Vedic meditation. Thursday night, I do, I mean, this is what it's like. I'm just trying to go, okay, it's really good to have time off when you're menopausal and you finished your book. So, I, and I'm doing with Fest. So, by the time with Fest happens, and hopefully I'll get onto my land by then, and COVID will be a distant oh, memory and we have, would have learned exactly. lessons from it and we won't be destroying the planet as much and 
you know, I mean, there's some good things about this, right? The seas are yeah. cleaner and the air is cleaner and, and the people are and the, and the stress and is healing, which is really, really lovely. Mm. Yeah, it's just the 600% increase in alcohol consumption that is a little bit of a problem and domestic violence as well. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's you're being at home. But, you know, hopefully, as Dalai Lama says, when you lose, don't lose the lesson. And, you know, that's a really good thing to remember. What I'm, what I'm What is the best thing for me to learn here? Yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful quote to end us off on. Absolutely. When you lose, don't lose the lesson. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very powerful. That is so good. So is there something you would like to provide the listeners? Everything. Food, <laughs> well-being, happiness, connection. Yeah. Um, Talk about but, a gift here, a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I did at the beginning of the year was um, I, I realised that people – a lot of people don't have time or the inclination to read a book. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, they want little sound bites. So I've put a whole lot of different topics, health conditions into an e-book and they're like six, seven, eight pages. They're, they're pretty comprehensive. And I put a recipe in there and made them really pretty. And they're $5 each for each link, each e-book. Um, so I was thinking, what if I give, you know, sticks away, for so six fives are 30 and we make it ten dollars for six ebooks of your choice sounds lovely sounds really really awesome yeah so but. the topics there they're in alphabetical order there everything from asthma adrenal fatigue alzheimer's autoimmune diseases um candida cancer diabetes is a big one because we've got all that wrong up until now. Endometriosis, fibroids, fibromyalgia, um, what's next? Histamines, you know, all menopause, perimenopause, andropause, SIBO. I mean, all the 21st century conditions and then some. And it's it's how I lay most of my things out. So it's what it's what's it what it's about, the stats on it, what's causing it, and how to treat it with herbs, essential herbal medicine, essential oils, food as medicine, and lifestyle. So what are the thought patterns behind it? Like what yep. part of our bodies are causing this? And like in Chinese medicine, I, I talk about the five elements in there. That's what what I'm actually talking about with first the five elements, and then the four stages of a woman's life. But the elements. So is it wood or earth? Is it lungs or liver? And then how to treat that? But very simply as well, because yeah. yeah. it's too overwhelming otherwise. Yeah, you know? yeah. definitely agree there. Love one of the very evil. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I'll definitely be uh, grabbing that too myself. So that's six ebooks. For ten dollars instead of thirty, whoop, whoop. that sounds fabulous. So, just thank figure you. out a way that I can do. Well, you, you give me the URL. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you figure that out. You give I'll, me the no, URL. I'll just I will have that'll be fine. <laughs> and I'll just yeah. put it in the posting here on the web page. Right. So, look, I really, really thank you. It's been an absolutely lovely conversation again with you, and I look forward to the next deep dive on the. What did we talk about? The epigenetics. So we'll have to do that mm, either before Christmas or maybe after Christmas. But uh, <laughs> that's we'll... just fascinating stuff. But if anybody hasn't yet even gone gone there, just follow Bruce Lipton on social media. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just wonderful stuff. It's groundbreaking, and I mean, it's been around for a few decades now. But we're kind of just catching on. Genes yeah. do not dictate your health, your lifestyle, and your attitude and your beliefs do. Mm. That's huge. It is huge. Absolutely mm. huge. Absolutely huge. Wow. You have given us a lot of food for thought. Ha <laughs> ha. You're so much for food. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope so. Good. I hope so. I want uh, people to think about things. Yeah, good. Lovely. Thank you Thank so, you so much. much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to bring this to some oh, more people through honor. the podcast. <laughs> It's an honour. Thank you, sir. And all the best with what you're doing. Well done. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.